Okay, so we're looking at algebraic methods, which is chapter 7. I've called it chapter 7a because I'm just going to do the first half of this chapter, which is like algebraic division and also the factor theorem. Now, I've skipped a bit on algebraic fractions because you should definitely know all of that stuff from GCSE. But what we're going to do is we're going to do these three questions here using algebraic division. Obviously, this is just a revision video. You should know how to do these things. It's just to kind of refresh your memory that we've got here. So we're going to try and write this um, expression that we've got here in this particular form, which means we're going to divide it by x plus 2. Now, when we do the division by x plus 2, we'll start off with our x plus 2 outside the front. And we just have to be a little bit careful about what we write inside here. Now, I don't know if you've noticed, but there's no x squared term. So I will write it in, but I will write it as a 0x squared term. And then I've got my plus x plus 18, just to kind of keep everything sort of um, in the correct places that it should be in. So as you remember what you do, you're always looking at the most dominant term, which is the one with the highest power. So if it was a 2 plus x, we would still write the x over here. And we're going to do the 2x cubed divided by the x, which is 2x squared. So I put that in the x squared column. And then I take this and I multiply it by x plus 2, which will give me a 2x cubed and a 4x squared. Next thing is to subtract so that they cancel. And we have 0 minus 4x which is minus 4x squared, sorry, 0x squared minus 4x squared. I'll pull down that x as well, so that's going to come down here. And then I'm going to do that same process. I will look at the more dominant term, meaning there's the higher power, and I'll divide it by x. So minus 4x squared divided by x is just going to be minus 4x. So I'll take that minus 4x and multiply it by the x plus 2, and I get minus 4x squared minus 8x. Now when we subtract, these are going to cancel. Just be careful here because we're doing x minus minus 8x, which becomes x plus 8x, which is 9x. Send that 18 down to the bottom so that we have the plus 18. And then I'm going to look at the 9x. I will divide it by the x, which is just a plus 9. And then that is going to uh, do the same process of the 9 multiplied by the x plus 2, which is 9x plus 9 times 2, which is 18. And they cancel completely. We get a zero in here totally, which means there's no remainder. And it can be written exactly in this form. So I guess the last thing to do is just to say that the way that we would write this would be x plus 2. And then we're going to write this quadratic inside here, which is 2x squared minus 4x plus 9. OK, this time we're going to do a remainder. So this one had zero remainder. We're now expecting there to be some kind of remainder with this question. So I'm going to do the x minus 3. That is how much it is going to be going into the 4x cubed minus 2x squared plus 3x minus 100. So I'm going to do the 4x cubed divided by x. That is going to be 4x squared. I'm then going to multiply by the x minus 3. So that gives me 4x cubed minus 12x squared. Again, be careful with the subtracting. Minus 2 minus minus 12 is minus 2 plus 12, which is 10. So it's the 10x squared. And I will pull that 3x down like this. Now I'm going to do the 10x squared plus 3x divided, oh, sorry, just the 10x squared divided by x. That is just a 10x. Multiply through and we get 10x squared minus 30x. When I do the subtracting, they cancel 3 minus minus 30 is 33x. And I'll pull down that minus 100 here. So the last stage is 33x divided by x, which is just 33. Multiply the x minus 3 by 33, and we get 33x minus 99. Do the subtracting. Minus 100 minus minus 99 is minus 100 plus 99 which is minus 1. So the remainder is minus 1, OK? So I'm going to say find the remainder. I'm going to say the remainder is minus 1. Now, if you do a different method to algebraic division, that is absolutely fine. In fact, on the next slide, I'm going to show you my other method. If you do a grid method, that's absolutely fine. If you do my in, in my head method, that's fine. But this is probably the most common one that we would see for this. Now, if we were going to write it as like two brackets, we would write it as an x minus 3, 4x squared plus 10x plus 33. And then there's a remainder at the end of a minus 1. That's how it would be if we were going to write it like that.
So this is one that I think is more like an exam style question, and it's particularly because of this part here that I have said using algebra. So let's read the question. It says, given that x equals one half is one solution of this cubic, find using algebra the two other solutions, which means you cannot just put this on your calculator. So we're going to have to try and think about how this might relate to um, algebraic division. Well, if x equals a half is a solution, you know when we have quadratics and we have stuff like, I don't know, x minus 2, x plus 5, we know that this one means that 2 is a solution and this one means that minus 5 is a solution. So if x equals a half is a solution, then we should say that, think about what this bracket is going to be, is a factor. And I'm saying a factor, it means it can be divided by this. The thing that corresponds to x being equal to a half, well, we could say that it's x minus a half, but more commonly, we would do it as a 2x minus 1. We know that that bracket would correspond to x being equal to a half. So what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to divide that cubic, which is my 2x cubed minus 5x squared minus 28x plus 15. I'm going to divide that by 2x minus 1. Oh, God, that was a terrible line. Divide that by 2x minus 1. And I picked this one so we had an example of dividing by something where it wasn't just a single x. So 2x cubed divided by 2x, well, it's going to become an x squared, and the 2s will cancel, so it's just going to be an x squared. x squared times by 2x minus 1, that is 2x cubed minus x squared. Okay, subtract, they cancel. Minus 5 plus 1, that becomes minus 4x squared, and I'll pull down that minus 28x. Minus 4x squared divided by 2x. Well, the minus 4 and 2 gives me minus 2, and the x squared over x is x. So I get a minus 4x squared and a plus 2x like this. And when I subtract, that's minus 28 minus 2. That is a minus 30x. Pull down the 15, and we get plus 15. So the last part now is just to double check that it does fully factorize out. We're going to want there to be a remainder of 0. So the minus 30 divided by 2 is minus 15. So we get minus 30x, and then minus 15 times minus 1 is plus 15. So it does cancel. So we can now say that 2x cubed minus 5x squared minus 28x plus 15 is going to be the same as 2x minus 1, and then x squared minus 2x minus 15. And now we've got it to this stage, we can use algebra to finish off finding the other roots. So I'm just going to factorize the other quadratic that we've got here. And this is what they mean when they say um, using algebra. So I think it's going to be a minus 5 and a plus 3. So a minus 5 and a plus 3. Now, what you can sometimes do for this is you can actually solve it on the calculator so that you kind of know where you're going and kind of like pretend that you knew what you were doing if you get stuck with anything. Um, but I would have obviously try and advise you to understand this whole process. So the roots are, the two other roots are x is equal to minus 3 and x is equal to 5. So we've got all three roots, or all three solutions. The two other solutions are x equals minus 3, x equals 5, and the original one was x equals a half. Now, I'm going to show you this part, which you can fully skip if you don't want to do this. But it's some algebraic division with sort of my particular method of how you might do this in your head. And it's totally optional, but it can be speedier. And there are so many other methods for this. If you want to use a different method, that's absolutely fine. This is just my two approaches, the algebraic division and then in my head. So I'm going to try and write this expression that we've got here in this particular form. And I'm just going to talk you through how I do this. So I know there's going to be an x minus 7. And I think to myself, the first thing I need to get is an x cubed. And the only way I can get an x cubed is by multiplying the x by an x squared. That's going to guarantee to give me an x cubed. But this produces a minus 7x squared. And I only want there to be minus 5x squared, which means I need to boost it up by 2 to go from minus 7 to minus 5. And I'll boost that up by 2x squared by adding on a 2x. Because if I add on a 2x, I will be multiplying it by an x, and I get an extra 2x squared. But this produces a minus 14x. And I only want there to be minus 6x. To go from minus 14 to minus 6, I need to boost it up by an 8x. And I can create that by multiplying that x by an 8. And this creates an extra minus 7 times 8, which is a minus 56. So I've already got it written in that form, doing it all in my head, which is a perfectly fine approach to take. Not much method written down, just going straight to the answer. 
So let's have a look at doing this one. I'm going to do with the x minus 3. We think to myself, how am I going to get a 2x cubed with this? Well, it is going to be a 2x squared, but that produces a minus 6x squared, and I want to boost it up to a minus 2x squared, which means I need to boost it up by a 4x squared. Well, I have an x, so I will boost it up with a 4x. But then that produces an extra minus 12x. And actually, I want it to go down further, all the way down to minus 17, which means I want to have an extra negative 5x. Well, I have an x there, so there's going to be the negative 5 that goes with it. And thankfully, that minus 3 and that minus 5 also produces that 15 that we were looking for. So there it is. And then my last one I'm going to do, this one is a harder one because of the 2x being here, but I'll show you that it can still be done. So we have my 2x minus 3. And I want to think, how do I get a 4x cubed from this? Well, I need to have a 2 and an x squared to get 4x cubed. This produces a minus 6x squared, and I want it to go to a minus 4x squared. So I need it to go up by a 2x squared. Well, there's a 2x here, so I need it to be an extra x to get the 2x squared. But this produces a minus 3x, and I want it to go down to a minus 11x. So I need it to go down 8x. Well, I have a 2x, so I need to multiply that by a minus 4. That then produces the extra minus 3 and the minus 4, which gives me the 12 that I was hoping to have there. So that's my in my head method. If you look at it on a page, it's not going to do much help because it's just the answers. But that's how I always did these when I was at school. There are other methods you could do. You could also expand the brackets on this form that you've got here. And then you could compare the coefficients to find out what A, B and C are. There's many, many methods for this. So you pick the one that's right for you. We're now going to do the factor theorem. So I'm just going to zoom in on these boxes over here. If f of a is equal to zero, then by the factor theorem, we would say that x minus a is a factor of f of x. Okay. So if you get it equaling zero, then this is a factor. Now, an exam tip, if you do use the factor theorem, you should state, hence by the factor theorem, this is a factor. You should say, if this is true, then this is true. Even if you don't say factor theorem, you should say, if this is the case, then this is the case. Rather than using it, you do need to actually say that you are using it. So this first one says, show using the factor theorem that f of x is divisible by x minus one. So if divisible by x minus one, if divisible, by x minus 1, then f of 1 will equal 0. You can either say this now or you can say it at the end. So I'll do f of 1, which is 2 times by 1 cubed minus 1 squared plus 4 times 1 minus 5. So what's that? 2 minus 1 plus 4 minus 5, which is equal to 0. So we can say as f of 1 equals 0, I'm going to do the full explanation. I'm going to say by the factor theorem, by the factor theorem, f of x is divisible by x minus 1. Okay, a much more complicated one for this process. We have that g of x is equal to ax cubed plus x squared minus 6ax plus b, okay? What we're going to do, it says that x minus 1 and x plus 3 are factors of g of x. Find the values of the constants a and b that we have got here. So let's have a look at what we're going to do. If, if we have that x minus 1 is a factor, we know that f of 1 is equal to 0. So well, not f of 1, g of 1, because we're talking about a g function here. So we can say that g of 1 would be a times by 1 cubed plus 1 squared minus 6 times a times 1 plus b. That should all be equal to 0. So that's a plus 1 minus 6a plus b equals 0. So that is a minus 5a plus b. I'll put the 1 on the other side is minus 1. Now if x plus 3 is a factor, looks like we're going to get simultaneous equations here, then we're going to say that g of minus 3 equals 0. So I'm going to do the same process, but I'll substitute in minus 3 for x. So that's a multiplied by minus 3 cubed plus minus 3 squared minus 6a times by minus 3 
plus b equals zero. So let's sort this out. Minus three cubed is minus 27. It's minus 27a. That is a plus nine plus 18a plus b is equal to zero. So for the a's, we just have minus 20, oh, minus 27 plus 18, that's minus 9a plus b is equal to minus 9 that we've got there. So we can just put this straight onto our equation solver. So I'm just going to do that off the screen here. I'm going to do a simultaneous equation with two unknowns. I've got minus 5 for the coefficient of a, 1 for b and minus 1, minus 9, 1, and minus 9. And we get that our value for a is equal to 2 and our value for b is equal to 9. So that's the first part of the question. And then it says, hence using algebra, fully solve g of x equals 0 that we've got. So we need to do like that thing we did in the previous slide. We're now going to go back to what g of x is equal to. We're going to say that g of x is uh, a, so that's 2x cubed plus x squared minus 6a, so that's minus 12x plus b, which is 9. Now, to fully solve it, we can divide it by x minus 1 and then by x plus 3. So I'm going to do the I'm going to do the long method for the first one, then I'll do the short method for the second one. So I'm going to do, dividing it by x minus 1, 2x cubed plus x squared minus 12x plus 9. So I'll divide it by the x, and that is a 2x squared. So it's 2x cubed minus 2x squared x squared minus minus 2x squared is 3x squared, pull down the 12x, divide it by x, and we get 3x, that's 3x squared minus 3x, 12x minus 12x minus minus 3x is minus 9x, pull down the, min uh, pull down the plus 9, minus 9x divided by x is minus 9, so we get minus 9x plus 9, and we get 0. So we've now got that g of x can be written as x minus 1, 2x squared plus 3x minus 9. And we know that the other solution was x plus 3. So that double bracket is going to be an x plus 3. Should be very easy to work out what that last bracket is going to be. I think it's going to have to be a 2x and a minus 3. Let's just double check. We get the 2x squared. We get a 6x minus 3x. Yep, that's right. And we get this. So that's all perfect. We're now going to say fully solve g of x. So I will say if g of x is equal to 0, the full solutions are that x is equal to 1, x is equal to minus 3, and from our last bracket, x is equal to 3 over 2. So that's what they mean when they say using algebra. You can't do it on the calculator. You do have to show this kind of process down here. So that's everything with the factor theorem. I hope you liked my in my head method that you've got here. If not, you can always do your other methods. There's loads and loads of approaches to this. I wonder which things the teachers have, sh have showed you. So at the end of the next chapter, I will do the proof section. Um, but I hope to see you in another video soon.